بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم let us uh, start discussing the dynamics of uniform uh, circular motion uh, previously we talked about the kinematics of uniform circular motion we mean by uniform motion with constant speed uh, circular motion an object which is moving in a circular uh, circular path um, we have seen this before from kinematics point of view we said that an object moving with constant speed so v is v is constant v is uh, constant which is the speed okay but the direction is changing okay so v uh, always is the tangent to the circular path so it keeps changing its uh, direction and we said that there is a centripetal acceleration okay which is acceleration towards center and this is equal to uh, it has a magnitude of uh, v square over over r where r is the uh, radius of the circular circular path okay so this is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration why do we have acceleration because there is a change in the velocity although the speed is constant but direction is changing okay changing direction so the velocity is changing because the direction of the uh, velocity is not constant so this is why we have acceleration the acceleration is the rate of a change of of the velocity this has been discussed before uh, in the uh, kinematics but now let us talk about the dynamics uh, because now we know that in newton second law f net equals ma so this is our object moving in a circular path so at this point uh, its acceleration is towards center okay this is AC at this point when it comes here where is its acceleration the direction of the acceleration is this way okay and if my object is here the acceleration will be this way so it keeps it changing its direction but it is always uh, seeking the center or toward the center and this is why we call it uh, centripetal acceleration okay so according to newton's second law f equals m a so this is our object it has centripetal acceleration so this is a c and there should be a force as we have seen before this is a vector equation so there is a force we will call it centripetal force it should be in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration Okay, and this is Fc will be m v square v square over r. Okay, so this is very important uh, result, and this object, while moving, or in order to make it moving in a circular path, there should be a centripetal force will be in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration so here I can write FC which is equal to MAC okay when the object is at this position it will be directed in this direction so this is FC and here FC will be toward the center so in conclusion we can say the following if you would like to have an object moving in a circular path you need to apply a centripetal force on that object a force toward the center of that circular path how much is that force that force should be equal to m the mass of the moving object multiplied by the square of its uh, speed divided by the radius of the desired uh, circular circular orbit so let me write this very important uh, uh, result in order to have an object in order to uh, move an object in a circular path okay what should we do we should apply a centripetal force okay a centripetal force centrip the force should be 
should be applied. We should apply that centripetal force. Uh, so I can explain it. If C equals M V square over R and its direction should be toward toward the center. So this is the magnitude of the of the FC. Its direction is toward toward center. Okay? Toward toward the center of the circular circular band. Okay, from where we can get this centripetal force? Let me give you a few examples and uh, this uh, this uh, centripetal force is not extraordinary force. It is one of the forces which we uh, uh, deal with. Uh, let me assume that I have this ball. I have this ball, okay? Um, I can move it in straight line, okay? I can move it in a straight line. It is here. I can move it in a straight line. But if I want to have it moving in a circular path, I should apply a force which keeps it moving uh, in a circular path. Now I'll attach it to a string, okay, and I can move it in such a, cir a circle. Okay, you can see that my ball now is moving in a circular, circular path. What is the force responsible of making it moving in a circular path is the centripetal force. It is this Fc, okay, and this Fc is given by the tension. What do we call the force in the tension? The force in the string, we call it tension, okay? So Fc in this case will be the, will be the tension in our, in our string, okay? Uh, by the way, this uh, motion, we call it a circular motion in vertical plane, okay? Because the ball is moving up and down. While moving it uh, this way, we call it motion of the ball in horizontal in horizontal plane, okay? Um, so this is one example. The centripetal force, F, C, can be tension force, okay? So as I have shown you in this example of the ball and the uh, string. Let me give you another example. We know that the moon is rotating around Earth, okay? The moon rotates around Earth once every uh, one Hijri month, every 29.5 uh, days, okay? So it is almost circular motion. Approximately, it is a circular uh, motion. What keeps the moon in its orbit? Why the moon doesn't move in a straight line? Because there is a force pushing the moon, or, or pulling, sorry, pulling the moon toward the center of the uh, circular path. What is that force? You can guess what is that force? It is the gravitational force between the Earth and the moon. So the Earth is pulling the moon toward the center, and this is why the moon is kept in a circular uh, path toward Earth. So it might be gravitational force. like the case of the, uh, of the moon moving around the Earth. And the same applies to the motion of Earth around the sun. It is also gravitational force. Or the motion of satellites around, around Earth or around other planets. Uh, the responsible force uh, in that case is the, gravitational, is the gravitational force. Also, sometimes we can have the uh, static friction force as the centripetal force. Okay, static, static friction force, okay? I can give you another example here, which is the case of having a car um, moving in a circular path. If I have a car moving in a circular path and you would like it to move in that circular path, there is a force responsible of keeping it in a circular path. That force is the static friction force. Why do we call it a static friction force? Because there is no motion outward or inward. It is exactly moving in the circular path, okay? So there is a force preventing the object not to 
um, slide on, on the surface. So that is the static friction force. Okay, it might also be the uh, normal force. It might be normal, normal force. I can give you the example of uh, you being a passenger in a car, okay, and the car was moving in a straight line. All of a sudden, the driver of the car will uh, uh, turn left, okay. Uh, in that case, uh, in a circular uh, exit, for example, in that case, you'll find your body a little bit tilted to the right, okay, and the door of the car will push against you toward the left. So, what keeps you moving in a circular orbit with the car is this normal force which is uh, exerted by uh, the right door of the car on your shoulder, okay, and keeps you uh, moving in that circular, circular uh, path. Let me uh, summarize. If you would like to uh, move an object in a circular uh, path, you need to apply a centripetal force. That centripetal force has a magnitude of m a centripetal. A centripetal is nothing but v square over r. So Fc has a magnitude of m v square over r. Uh, Fc, of course, has a direction. This direction is changing, but it is always toward, toward the center of the uh, uh, circular uh, path. And this Fc can be uh, any of the forces, it might be tension force, it might be gravitational force, it might be static friction force or normal force, it might be electric force uh, or magnetic force, uh, but we don't cover this in our uh, Physics 101 course. Thank you.